world-class Taekwondo K-Man inside the man's head. As people get intimidated by the K-Man, some are a bit scared of the K-Man because he's so smart and he's so wise. Well, I know him pretty well, he's my husband, and now I'd like to introduce you to him and you get to know him perhaps almost as well as I do so that you can see and feel and touch and taste what a fantastic person he is and how much value he can add to your life because he is your coach. K-Man! <laughs> Don't like to turn my back on someone. <laughs> Rory, how are you going? But your world-class Taekwondo experience for the world, you are the, the master of the world Taekwondo well, that's, that's a bit cool. Yeah. Master. <laughs> I know you're not quite quite a master yet, but you are. You people look at you and go, "He's good at everything. He's he's a multiple times world champion in taekwondo. He's got a master's degree in exercise science. He's intelligent. He's a he's good at everything. What's what's the story with the K-Man? And I know that he's a really nice bloke. Are you a really nice bloke? You married me. <laughs> <laughs> So let's, let's tackle the first one. Uh, you have uh, been an exercise professional all of your life, mm -hmm. uh, and you were the first personal trainer, back when we used to call them personal trainers, in Queensland and in Australia. Oh, it's probably one of them. I don't know who else there was. Uh -huh. You have an ability to create uh, something out of nothing. You're a visionary. What right. is it about you that a lot of people are scared and they get panicked and they... They, they don't live out their dream, but you have your whole life. What is, what is it about you that you always do what you're going, you say you're going to do? What is that about you? It's amazing. Well, what's the alternative? Not do it, and then think about it, and never actually do it, and then regret that you didn't do it, or didn't at least have a crack at it. It's not that I'm smarter than anybody else, because I was never at the top of my class, but I'm the most persistent. I would just keep going until I achieve what I want to achieve. So when I became a trainer, I was fortunate being one of the first trainers because there was no one, on, no one else around, therefore there's no history of failure, so therefore there's no one telling me I couldn't do it because no one had failed. So I just went and did it because no one had done it, which means there was no reason why I couldn't do it. Yeah, but people did say to you that no one's going to have a personal trainer. Basically. Yeah, but they didn't have any evidence that... that <laughs> there was no evidence no that evidence. you couldn't do it. There's nothing <laughs> to the contrary. And, uh, and if I always believe if, if you can think about an idea, then that idea is a great idea because if you're thinking about it, someone else is anyway. It's not like you have the only person in the world with that idea. If you're thinking it, someone else is thinking it. All right, but there's a disconnect there because a lot of people have great ideas. You've probably had a great idea and you may not have done it. You've had some brilliant ideas. You've mm. been the first in so many areas, first personal trainer, first sports strength and conditioning coach, first uh, personal training course in Australia. Mm. You've done a lot of firsts. Yeah, people well, said it wasn't possible. If you don't want any competition, be first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but the disconnect is people have an idea and don't do it. Mm. You have an idea and you do it. What's, mm. it what, what's that bit in the middle that you do that's different to most people? Well, if, I don't, if you don't do it, then you've got nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you don't do it, you've got nothing to do. Well, it's true. And yeah. Most people say that, don't they? Mm. What have you been doing? Nothing. nothing. There's nothing to do. <laughs> There's nothing more boring than doing nothing. <laughs> And nothing, nothing comes out of nothing, and something always comes out of something. So no matter what you do, something will come out of it, whether it be a, a lesson or knowledge or experience or whatever it might be, but you're always going to be better off by doing. You're going to be no better off by not doing. Okay, so people said that nobody would have a personal trainer, mm -hmm. and you did it. Yep. Uh, to the point where you, you were more successful in the 80s than personal trainers are now, even though personal training is an acceptable thing. People say to you all the time, you can't have that many clients and you can't make that much money, and you were doing that back in the 80s. Yeah. What, what, when people say to you, it's not possible, what goes through your headspace? Do you just have a giggle? Well, I find, find it amusing because what they're saying they can't do now, I was doing back in the 80s. Yes. And I was saying the other day to a lady, I said, back in 1989, I was training 40 people a week, charging $50 a session, Two grand a week is over a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's back in the eighties. That's when a hundred grand was a real a lot of money. That yeah, was a, lot, a lot, lot of money. And I was charging fifty dollars a session. It's back there, it's not because I knew anything different. I just picked the number out of my bottom and said it's fifty bucks. That sounds like a reasonable amount. 
And today, a lot of people aren't even charged They're too scared yeah, to. That's just the thing. All right. I can afford it. Well, someone can. So that's got to be my next question because uh, I watch you fight. Mm. I've watched you do business. I've watched you go into um, some really scary business situations. But it seems that you are fearless, that you don't have any fear. Is that what is that your driving force, that nothing can hold you back because you're not scared? I don't know if I'm... Well, I don't know if I'm not scared. I can't think of being scared. See? Well, what's, what's there to be scared of? You know, you, you, you're not going to get out of life a, a lot. Yeah, we're all going to die. You're going to die anyway. Yeah. I remember when I was... my uh, One of my business challenges, uh, I was going through some significant challenges during the GFC. And, and, that would be uh, the global financial crisis. crisis and a lot of people were getting <laughs> broke. And I remember my lawyer invited me in to have a chat to me, Rob his name is, and he said, I just want to see if you're okay. And I said, what do you mean if you're seeing you're okay? He says, well, you're hemorrhaging money. I said, man, if I was hemorrhaging blood, I'd be worried. But if I'm hemorrhaging money, then money is just a thing. And while you get upset about things or, or anything, because... See, the, with the smile on our face, because yeah. that was a really interesting time in history for a lot of people. Mm. And K-Man's underplaying that. There were people in the same position as us yeah, who suicide. committed suicide yeah. and really, really struggled. Well, I'm going to die anyway. And that was exactly what I was I'm going to die anyway. I don't need to shorten it. And everyone gets embarrassed. But what's there to be embarrassed? Life is about living life and having a crack at everything. And a big part of that is falling down and failing. That's where the lessons lie. The lessons are down there. Yeah, that's... You know, if you think you're going to go and do it and become successful first time, then you just, I don't know what planet you've been living on. Okay, so let's do, draw the um, correlation between business and sport. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that came in was at the time a third Dan, third degree Taekwondo fighter. Mm. Uh, and he said to me one day, I'm going to go back to Taekwondo. And mm. I said, oh, really? Back to Taekwondo? I knew that he'd been a martial artist. Mm. And you said to me, I'm going to do this to have fun. Stay young. Stay young. Yeah. And I said, oh, bullshit. <laughs> because I know you're a little bit better than that. Yeah. And now you are multiple world champion. Mm -hmm. Like, and you That's fine, isn't it? Yeah, but you've done a whole mm -hmm. lot of stuff that even the Taekwondo people said you couldn't do. What was, at, at 50 years of age, you go back into the ring and start fighting Argentinians and the crazy, crazy fighters. fighters yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do that? How do you, how do you share with people that you can do that? If you want to do a sport, you can. Well, there's more fun in the yes than the no. Oh, isn't that great advice? Yeah, you know, if you say no, write that down. <laughs> if you say no, nothing happens. If you say yes, then something happens. So it's more fun to be in the ring fighting than it is in the sideline watching. It's just, that's what it's the action is. It's more fun in the yes than there is in the no. Yeah, that's, that's so good. <laughs> so a lot of people, their first thing they say is no. Yeah. Which means no means nothing. Or can't. Or can't. So I can't. No, I might do that because I can't do it. The best thing is to say yes, how can I do it? And then you're going get to get the have, philosophy there. And, and it's not about the success or the achievement. It's about just being in the game and playing the game of life. So people play football not because they want to win. They play football because they love to play. And then because they love to play, they get great at it. Then they start winning. But you have to love the game. So how do you uh, how do you answer that question when people say came in severely intimidating or is scary or and that, that's obvious because you're so accomplished and you you are a health published health scientist, for example. So your 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 understanding, not just your knowledge of anatomy and physiology, but your understanding of anatomy and physiology is the best I've ever experienced mm -hmm. and I've been doing this a long time too. A lot of people are scared of that because you've got such in-depth knowledge. What what would your answer be to that? Well, it's not that I'm any different than anybody else. I just keep thinking about things and keep doing things. So it's not, you know, I wasn't the smartest person at university or the smartest sports scientist or anything like that. I'm just probably the person who thinks the most and keeps doing it until I can understand it and get it right and, and do it to the level that I want to do it. So if I do my master's degree, I go for my black foot or my or world championship, I say, okay, that's what I want. I'll start the process, I'll continue to keep doing it until, not until I get it right, but until I can't get it wrong, which is never, and that's why you keep doing, keep it. doing it. Why do I understand things? Because I'm always curious, I'm always thinking, I, I just want to know, I don't want to be guessing, making things up. If it's important to me, there's lots of things that aren't important to me, I know nothing about, yeah. I have no interest in. 
But the things that I'm interested in and I want to become a master of, whether it be a master in martial arts or a master in my craft or a master as a, an exercise you know, trainer, then I'm always thinking about how can I make it better and I want to know the answers to all those things. And I just keep going through and find, until I find the answers and until I can understand it to the level that I need to get it to to get what I want out of it. Which is you being very humble saying that you want to be the best. I know that you wouldn't say that, but... That seems to be the striving. You didn't. You never. You never compete to win silver. You never uh, study to learn half of it or do just enough to get by. You are the person that always goes to the absolute limit to make sure that you get everything that you need. Yeah, because if I'm going to do it, see, it takes the same amount of time to do something badly as it does to something do something great. <laughs> see this wisdom. I, I have the privilege of hearing this every day. You know, it takes the same amount of time it does. to be it average as it does to be the best. It does. It takes the same amount of time as to win or to lose. It takes the same amount of time to go for a run and not go for a run. Because if you're not going for a run, you're sitting on the couch thinking, thinking about, about it. Yeah. Same amount of time. One gets you fit and lean, one gets you fat and lazy. So if you're only thinking about it, then you mostly do it, then you don't have to think about it. You know? I always think this if you're thinking about it, then the best way to stop thinking about it is to do it. do it. And when you've done it, then you have to think about it. Then you've got something else to think about it at a higher level, at a higher level of success. So before you know it, you're going to accumulate lots of achievements and lots of uh, successes, uh, not because you, you're, you're natural or you're talented, it's because you're always acting on your thoughts. Yeah. All right, so I know this is, there's two questions coming. One is, I've never seen you annoyed, angry, upset, you're always the same. He's not like me where this is not came in. Yeah. <laughs> but I've, I've never, ever, you are always the same. It doesn't matter what's going on, whether it's hot or cold, rich or poor, tough times, great times, you're always a positive, happy guy. Mm. Uh, and I do know, though, because we live in the same house, <laughs> that there is a level of fascination, if not sometimes frustration, mm. of people who don't putting an effort like we deal with people every day who do just enough to get by we have a lot of students who want to even though there's a tough process to get into the max colleges mm. and you're the one that accepts them because we have to work with people and you're looking for the people who want to go the extra mile we are bombarded most days with people who want to do just enough to get by and i know that that can be fascinating frustrating how do you deal with that well, it's not. Well, what's your advice to well, that? Well, it's not. Well, first of all, panic's not a part of any solution. Mm -hmm. uh, frustration doesn't breed success. Um, you know, getting angry doesn't is not a part of the solution either. You know, because now you're in a state where you're going to say stupid stuff and do stupid stuff because you're driven by a negative emotion. So if you're in that spot where you've got a bit of a negative emotion, the best thing to do is just shut up and, and do nothing until the emotion settles where you can start to the fog of that negative emotion. You get settles. emotional, but I've never seen you emotional. I've only ever seen you logical, common sense, visionary thinking. Yeah, sometimes, you know, there's something happens and I okay, go, well that's fascinating. So you you have to change your vocabulary to change your perspective on things. You don't get annoyed, you just get fascinated. You get fascinated, you know? <laughs> first of all you go, okay, that's fascinating. And a lot of time, yeah, it, these things aren't happening to you they're just happening and you happen to be there so you have to you know make that disconnect you know someone's getting angry and they're yelling at you it's not that they're yelling at you they're just angry and they're yelling and you happen to be there yeah. and sometimes you know what you you say or do is aggravated it and that's sometimes it's fascinating because you say oh look that person you they're very sensitive to to whatever happened or whatever you said and that's not your challenge it's their challenge all right, let's go a bit bigger than that, though. Uh, we're living in a world where there are lots of challenges. The world's pretty unhealthy. There's always has to be challenges, And isn't there's it? financial challenges. But we worked out that in our lifetime mm -hmm. that there's been seven of those, seven big major world events where the world has thought, oh, we're going to die. Or, Doomsday and yeah. all that stuff, yeah. But you have remained cool, calm and collected through all of those where other people have been panicking and they have been anxious and they have been angry and upset and you just stay the same. Is there advice for that, or is that just who you are? Well, just don't get don't get uh, uh, upset or panicky over things you have no control over. Mm, That's no the first control. thing. And the things you do have control of, you start taking action on them, then it's going to put you in a better state mentally and physically than you were beforehand. So if you're taking action on the things you can control, 
And the only thing you really, really can control is your own thoughts, because your life is lived in the ocean of your own thoughts. So as soon as you master your thoughts, you master your life. And you master your life, you're going to master everything around you and what you see. And two people can see the same thing and they see different things. Uh, one who sees as negative, one who mm -hmm. sees a someone who sees adversity, one who sees an opportunity. And do you always see as that? I as always a... see everything as an opportunity, mm -hmm. an opportunity to start again, to press the reset button, to change things, or turn that lemon into lemonade. Uh, what's the alternative? Yeah. But is that in your DNA? Do you think, or do you, can you learn? Can you teach people how to do that? I think you have to want to learn to do that. Uh... Because if you don't want, if you're if you're used to and comfortable being a victim. Uh, of life rather than the master of life and some people who play the victim because it gets them attention and mm -hmm. sympathy and all that but nothing comes good it comes out of that just a poor reputation where if you look at something and you turn it into an opportunity yeah but you see i've turned to a puppy dog's mm -hmm. agree <laughs> i was trying to turn and you we've been together well over 20 years and you've seen things happen and how I've just, every, every time something happens, I just turn it into, well, what a great opportunity. Always, it's an opportunity, what, what, yeah. If you do that, then your life is always going to move forward in, in a positive way. It may not always move in the direction you exactly plan, but you will keep moving forward because you're turning everything into that forward, north-driven uh, compass. Okay, so there's a choice. You can always choose. Even if you have no control over it, you can choose to can look choose, at it in a positive you way. You can choose your thoughts, you know. You can't change the past, but you can change what you think in the past. You can't change well, people what's People say happening. to you that I can't control my thoughts. Where answer that would be? Well, they can. <laughs> of course you can, yeah. I'm sure if they're really upset and all of a sudden uh, they got a ticket saying they won't go to lotto, their thoughts just change dramatically. Yeah. So rather than have an external thing change your thoughts, why don't you... Your, your internal driver changes your own thoughts. So you're obviously self-motivated. You don't need somebody to come and... Well, people say to us every day, I need to be motivated, I need to be inspired, I need somebody to hold me accountable. Mm. I've never seen that in you ever. That's just you're a self-driven, self-motivated. What self -motivated. show up? Yes. <laughs> you know, as soon as you rely on someone else, you actually play, put yourself in a very weak, victimised position where you're now dependent and needy upon someone else to to motivate you, and, and that, that's just a silly thing to Fruity. do. That puts you in a very... <laughs> he must want his dinner. He does. <laughs> yeah, he's just giving me a little, hey, Brutty, we're coming. Yeah, so when you do that, you actually make yourself weaker, not stronger, because you, you, you're actually disempowering yourself to put the power in someone else's hands to motivate you. The reverse of that, though, I've never met anybody ever as committed to helping people do their thing. You will at any time of the day or night, seven days a week, 365 days of the year, you're the guy that will always help. And this is a really important part of what we're doing today mm. is that you have not just the in-depth understanding of anatomy and physiology, not just the business acumen that has put you on the young witch list and had the most successful companies in Australia. Brody Cutie! <laughs> Woo! He's gone, yeah, that's my daddy. <laughs> uh, you have so many skills and tools and knowledge and insight and wisdom and you are the coach for our max uh, business professionals and exercise professionals uh, but the challenge we've got is a lot of people don't take advantage of that because they're scared of you or because they're intimidated by you mm. so i'm sharing with you that he's the guy that wants to help you now I, I explain to me when you go to the opening of a of one of our student studios or the opening of a business or they they become a millionaire or all the things that we've experienced with our students, how does that make you feel? Oh, like a proud dad. <laughs> you know, it's, it's no use having wisdom and knowledge and skills and unless unless it's given. It's, yeah, if you keep it, that's just selfish. If you have, if you can help, then why wouldn't you help? And it's not a, a race, it's just about helping everyone um, win their own race and we're all in our own lanes. So when people, you know, if they, they want to become really successful and they want my input to help them do that, by all means, you know, it's, they have their own measurement of success. Uh, but you've made, like we all have, millions of mistakes mm. and you want to make sure that our students don't make those same mistakes. So there's access to that big toolbox full of don't do this because we did it and it was stupid. Mm. But there's also, you've been very, very successful. There's nothing in the exercise profession or the business world that you haven't done. There's, you've achieved at every single level. Mm. Uh, so you've got all of that knowledge to pass on as well. Well, there's things I, I haven't done, but those things are meaningless to me. Everything I wanted to do, 
I've, I've achieved and anything new I want to do, I will achieve again. All right. So at Max, we always talk about the four, four big areas of life. Mm -hmm. We talk about health and fitness yep. which, and being strong yep. physically. We talk about having a career or business that you're passionate about. Yep. We talk about being financially free yep. or well on the path to that. Mm -hmm. And we talk about having great relationships mm -hmm. with yourself and with other people. That's the fundamentals of the program. Yep. So I always say to people, have you ever met somebody that is healthy, fit and strong, <laughs> has a career or business that they're really passionate about, is financially free and has great relationships? Yeah. And you're that person. Mm. So you are the living, breathing example of the MAX program. Yep. And what most, for most people, that is the ultimate life. Yeah. And you have the skills, tools, and knowledge for all of that, and you want to help other people to do the same. Because it's a great life. I have yes. the best life in the world. <laughs> I'm the happiest person in the world. I have the greatest life in the world. There's no life better. There's might be other, there might be other people's lives. He's just he, he wants to be involved. Come on, brothers. Come on, darling. This I want to talk to. Yeah, but like, this is, and, and we have dogs. This, <laughs> this is brutus. We have four, yeah. but he's our oldest. <laughs> so there might be people who have as good a life, but no better, because how much happier uh, can you be when you're 100% happy? Because everything you create around you in your life is exactly what you want to create. So the Max program mm -hmm. was developed for those four reasons. Give people a magnificent life. Yeah. I always say to people, you know, the, the program is designed to not else just help you become a great exercise professional, but to help you have a great life in all the important areas in life. Which is those big four. Mm. So for the people, if, if any one of those areas of your life isn't the way you want it to be, Change so it. <laughs> yeah, but the beautiful thing is that you, you are there. You people have access to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we look at health and fitness, being fit and strong, you want to be, I want to be, I'm, I think everybody wants to be, and then the, we want everybody in our life to be. We don't want anybody to be unfit and weak. No, of course not. So the program is designed to make exercise interesting and exciting yeah. so that everybody knows how to be healthy, fit and strong. Yep. Yeah. And your in-depth knowledge of anatomy and physiology and, the, and your understanding of that has made that possible for everybody. Yep. Yes? Off you go, darling. See ya. He's off. <laughs> so what is it about your understanding of how the human body works that's so different from any other anatomist or physiologist who make it all complicated and boring? Uh, <laughs> I think I have a, the best of both worlds. I have the academic world or that scientific world, and I also have the, the practical. I've been a practitioner all my life. And I'm always thinking how, how do the two connect and how does one justify the other rather than they're, they're separate. And then to implement it and practice and live it and breathe it and constantly thinking how to make it better makes you better understand it. So you've trained elite athletes of all sports, mm -hmm. teams and individual athletes. Okay. And every day there's a new person who goes, and a sports person will come up on television and you'll go, oh yeah, I trained them or their brother or... <laughs> <laughs> or their dad. <laughs> uh, obviously you're an elite athlete yourself uh, and you've, you've been an elite athlete in lots of different sports. Mm. Uh, so you have a great understanding of that elite level. But you've also trained people with major disabilities. You've trained people who have been sick, have cancer, all sorts of horrible things. Mm. So you've got a really good understanding of this is how, how yucky the human body can perform mm. and this is how it can perform at the top level. Yeah. So you've got a really good understanding of that. Uh, your ability to share that, is it because you're so passionate about helping people? Is that the driving force? I think I'm just always curious and trying to work out how it all works. There's no only drive I need to examine this. I'm just curious about the things that I'm passionate about. So I'm always trying to work out to help myself understand it, but in that same process that makes me better at teaching to help other people understand it by breaking it down, using analogy, acronyms, comparisons to, to say, okay, how does this work? Because there's nothing better than getting a better understanding of things that is meaningful to you. So... And I don't think there is a school of common sense. I think, no. you know, they have common sense, you don't have common sense. And I seem to be being gifted with a, an ability to have common sense and looking at the world and the parts of the world and say, well, that makes sense, or well, that doesn't make sense. 
But my common sense might be someone else's nonsense, so that's all relative, isn't it? Brady said again nonsense, Dad. He nonsense. is. He's off. He's off. <laughs> no, we'll miss that sound in the leaves, won't we? Absolutely. Mm. He's 18. He's 18 years of age, so I'm cherishing every every growl, every scratch, every moan. Well, that's what he's, he's coming to the end of his rainbow, and uh, I'm going to yeah, milk every moment of it. Wow. <laughs> and that's how we live here at this house. Uh, every day is a special day. Mm. Uh, every, every day could be your last day. And every, how do we create as many wow moments as possible? Mm. Uh, how do we, how can we inspire people? How do you, if you were giving advice to people about living their life, what advice would you give them on how to enjoy every day? <laughs> Live your life. Don't listen to other people. Um, tell you how to live your life. It's your life. You're the one who has to live it. You're the one who's, who's going to have it for a long time, a short time. We don't know how long. And uh, every single moment should be a magical moment because it could be your last moment. And if you just act on your own values and your own passion and your own thoughts, and you're going to map out a fantastic life for you, irrespective of what other people think. Because what they think of you is none of your business. Because ultimately you're the one who has to wake up alone and you'll go to sleep alone. And in between they, most of the time you're going to be in your own mind. People come in and out, mm -hmm. and uh, but you're Dude, always, you're always there. there. So you have to become your own best friend, do what you love, be proud of yourself, do what's the most meaningful to you. And at the end of your life, the only thing you're going to have is your memories um, and your, your thoughts. And you can create your own memories and your thoughts by your actions. So make sure you take lots of actions to create great magical memories. Yeah. Yeah, you look back and say, how did I live my life? Or how didn't I live my life? The only thing you're going to, only thing you're going to regret in your life is the things you didn't do. <laughs> All right, so the, the best advice, uh, and again, you accept people into the next program. Mm -hmm. That's your responsibility. And they um, come to me because they want to change their life. So the, and this is a, uncomfortable question to ask. The people that do just enough to get by, the people that um, want to just do the least amount possible. Yeah. Um, is there advice for that? Is there, please don't do that? Is the Because you're just not that person. You're the one who always does more than is required, more than is expected. Well, if I do less, I'm going to get less. If, if I do half the work, I only get half the job done. And if it's more important to you, why do you not want to learn as much as you possibly can? There's no shortcuts to success. If you want to earn more, you got to learn more. And if you're trying to just shortcut yourself to get a certificate, it's like someone who goes, oh, I'm going to go and buy one of those express black belts online, and all of a sudden I'm a black belt. And as soon as you get into your first fight, you get, you're just going to be annihilated. And if you shortcut yourself in, in our profession, uh, you, yes, you'll be a qualified trainer or an exercise professional, but you won't get any clients and you won't have a business and you'll go broke and before you know it, you'll look back and say, well, maybe I should have done everything. And that's why we have a lifetime education, so <coughs> even if you, hey, really? <laughs> Bruce agrees. Bruce agrees with me. <laughs> Do everything. Do everything you can to become the best you can become and you'll be fine. And we often uh, have to... Um, help inspire, um, work with people who have low self-esteem or low self-confidence uh, and their business is not doing very well. Uh, what do you think is the correlation between knowledge, mm. <laughs> knowing your stuff and your, your self-confidence? Well, confidence is the foundation of uh, confidence, isn't mm -hmm. it? So you can't take action unless you know what to take action on. Um, the more you know, the more... Um, Opportunities, or the more options you have, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if things aren't going well and you don't know why they're not going well, there's nothing worse than that. You know, I say to my fighters is that I'm going to teach you everything I can about fighting, and and it, it's not that you're not going to get hit. You will get hit, but at least if you get hit, you know why you got hit. Uh -huh. There's nothing worse than being in a fight and you get uh -huh. you're, you're getting bashed up and you don't know why you're getting beaten up. Mm -hmm. Well, business is like that. If you're losing money or you're not getting clients or you're not things going, if, yeah, there's nothing worse that because if you keep doing the same old thing, you keep getting the same old thing. And that, you well, let's the use same. that as an example. In the exercise profession, uh, we could do this side, which is you can't make money. There's too many trainers. There's too many gyms. You can't make a decent income, and which is a lot of people tell 
people who come to the college, it'll never work for well, you. Well, the people who say that are people who've never done it, mm -hmm. or the people who did it and failed and quit because mm -hmm. they didn't do it properly the first time. Didn't have the skills and knowledge. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just the naysayers. But the reverse of that is we have literally hundreds of examples of people who have very successful gyms, very successful personal yeah, training studios. They're millionaires. And why is it that people want to listen to the negative stories? Because there's a lot of them. <laughs> they're everywhere. These ones, these ones, there's not as many, but they're too busy to be giving you advice. They're too busy doing Yeah, but that's interesting, though, because they always, they're happy. Our best students, our most successful students from the last 20 years, if we give you their telephone number, you can call them and they will help you. They're that, it's like they're that kind of person that mm. we just... We want you to be good at what you do, which is the same as you. Well, if you want to be good at what you do, don't listen to the losers, listen to the winners. When I got back into fighting in all my life when I was young, I wanted to be a great fighter, so I studied the great fighters. The Muhammad Ali's, the Bruce Lee's. I went and seeked them. The best. And I learned from the best. I got back into talk and I found out who the best champions are, and I studied them, and I trained with them, and I didn't listen to the ones who were average. I went to those few who were great. I paid my money, I paid my time, I did my dues. I learnt my skills, I took my, my, uh, my beatings, but I learnt from them and I got great at it. Well, the same applies with your profession. If you're going to become the best person trying to find who the best are in the world, find the, who, who are the most successful, the wealthiest, the whatever it might be, and go and find out what they're in. Don't listen to the ones. If they, everyone has an advice, but don't take the advice from someone who hasn't got or done what you want to do. That's a silly place to get advice. So as we always say here, find the people who are healthy, fit and strong and living and practicing what they preach. Yeah. Find the people that are doing it because they love it, yeah. not for the money, but they actually love it. Find the people that are financially free yeah. and find the people that are really good at communicating and building great relationships. And yeah. those people, as we call them, they're unicorns. Unicorns. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to be happy, <laughs> hang out with happy people. Don't ask a grumpy person how to be happy. Don't talk you out of happiness and how to be grumpy. You know, that happiness doesn't work. And people are say you're positive all the time. Of course, of course I am. I said, you can't be positive all the time. I said, well, what's your alternative? Because nothing... Positive comes out of negative unless you turn that negative into a positive as a form of a lesson. So the purpose of this was to, you're a real person. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, nice muscles. <laughs> a few lumps there. You're a, a lift up. Woo -hoo. <laughs> Came in, lifts, of course. So you're a real person. You breathe, you exercise, you eat food, you've got animals, you're married, mm -hmm. you've got a fantastic life and you want to share that information with our students. Now that fantastic life happens to include that you are an... A, and I'll use the word master because I have, for me, master comes from 10,000, 20,000 hours of, mm. of your craft. 37 years as a trainer. And it, you, 31 years in business. It, it's just expertise that you have fighting. access to. <laughs> Do you love? Say that again. How many years of fighting? 30 years of fighting. <laughs> well, I started when I was 10, so technically I've been fighting for uh, uh, 45 years. Yeah. But I had a bit of a gap in there. But that was when you were fighting for business and what you believed in and what your mm. core values are. Uh, what I want to share with you, as and it's very, I can say it's biased, but I've met a lot of people and I've never met anybody like you who lives and breathes everything that you say. Mm. Uh, and when people awesome. ask, yeah, can you be happy all the time? The answer is... <laughs> why not? Just ask, why not? You say, well, you can't. Just why not? Yeah. And if, if you could, how would you? There's a great question. If you and, could, how would and you? And success leaves clues. And, and, if you, and all I do is I'm not going to tell anyone how to live. What I'm going to do is give them the clues of how they can create their own life according to their own rules that's going to make them happy and help other people be happy because you passion is pass I on. You want to pass it on. And the ultimate... We all, it's funny because we talk about success and ultimately that's just being happy. Mm. But when we talk about being happy, people say you can't be happy all the time. <laughs> but, Dog, if you, but if you were <laughs> healthy, fit and strong, you had a career that you loved, you were financially free and you had great people in your life mm. and you loved who you are, mm. is it possible to be happy? <laughs> well, ha be happy and then seek all those things. Don't seek those things and to be happy. And hope they're going to make you happy. Yeah, because you won't enjoy the journey because you won't be happy until you get when you get there. It's been so long since you've been happy, you forgot how to be happy anyway. All right, so this is from my heart to yours. And here he is, his heart to yours. 365 days a year, 
24 hours a day, we are available to help you to have those four parts of your life sorted. And I share that. And people say, how can you promise 365 days a year? Because what we do, we don't do for work. Well, my friend, When was the last time you my, worked? I don't tell my friends. <laughs> I'm only available. <laughs> and when people come into the Max family, they're family, they're friends. So... It doesn't matter, we just agree time to connect. And someone says, well, no, I'm only available with my friends on 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. Well, that's the job. And that's not what not we have. We do what we do because we love what we do. We do it for free and we know the time you do do it for free. So, when people say, oh, but K-Man's too busy, the answer is... I'm never too busy. Never ever. I'm never too busy to help someone who wants to uh, you know, improve their life. So, to quote you, and you can finish it for me, if, you, if I'm 100% in, you're 100% in. Mm. If I'm 99% in... I'm 100% out. Because that gives you that 1% uh, doorway to, to fail. It's like if we get married. You know, I'm, 100, I'm 99% sure I want to get married. Well, no, no, no. Come back when you're 100%. 100%. And that's the same with everything. If you, you want something, then you've got to be 100% in... And you've got to see it through to the end. If you do that, you will always succeed. If you only go in there mm. with a hoping it's going to work or I wish it works or you only... You what know, if I fail? That's what I hear often. What if I You fail. only fail if... You quit or die. <laughs> Even when you die, you didn't fail. If you die, try and then that's a success. Yeah. It? Well, there's two times when you fail. Number one is when you quit. But the worst time is if you didn't even start. start yeah. That's the worst failure because then you don't even know. I'm thinking about doing it, but I never did it. Well, a lot of people procrastinate, isn't it? So here's a guy, a man, a real person who says what he's going to do and then he does it. And in fact, it's a reverse of that. He often says nothing, just goes and does it and then comes back with the gold medal or the, the, the high achievement because you're a never give up person. Mm. So you have access to this man whenever you need help or if you just want to have a chat or if you just want to... Talk about stuff. What a great person to talk about stuff ideas. with. <laughs> not, not gossip. No issues with no. gossip. All I'm interested in is talking about good ideas. So I'm let's finish on that. Uh, who was the person that said there's three kinds of people? Einstein. And he said, well, the first, one. the first time he calls them the losers and they're the people, all they talk about is other people. Gossip. And obviously in the gossip he sets. And that's where most, a lot of people, they're always worrying about... What not interested in that. We no, stop that. Gossip. Yeah. No. And they even read the gossip magazines and watch the gossip TVs. TV shows. Uh, the second person is why he calls the average people. They talk about events and things. What did you do on the weekend? What did you do on the weekend? I went to the footy and the, what do you know, we going out to a picnic. And, and that's all great and fantastic. But you're talking about the past, aren't you? Yeah, well, you're, you're actually the spectator. You're going to the footy to watch. You're no. not going in the footy to play. So many times the events are you're just a spectator, but you're not actually in the game. And the last one, I, what Einstein calls geniuses, and I, they talk about is ideas and the ways to implement them. And that could be, you could be a genius in business, a genius as a mum, you're always looking at how to be a better mum for your children, mm -hmm. or a genius in being an inventor, or a genius in I'm going to keep building my business and add value to the marketplace, a genius as a, a pastor or a minister in your church, whatever it might be. The genius are always breaking things apart and making them better and making themselves better. Because if you want everything else to grow around you, you have to grow inside you. So that's a... Uh, pre-frame to conversation with the key man mm. is don't come with gossip and talking about other people because no. then all this conversation will don't be shut down. That. It's negative. There's nothing about um, what's going on in the world that we really have any control over. Mm. But if you want to talk ideas and vision and concepts and inventions and making the world a better place, yeah, I love that stuff. Then that's the man. <laughs> people make something out of nothing. So make sure that you never, ever have an excuse for not having a circle of influence. People say that, I don't have anybody in my life who, who can be my great circle of influence. Well, that's what K-Man's here for, to be in your circle of influence, to be your coach, your ball well, boy, your yeah. water girl. Well, connect. connect. Uh, if you can't find anyone else, go and buy some great books of great people who've done great things. My circle of influence is obviously you and a small handful of people, because I find most people are gossiping negative, so mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of people in that. Don't expect to have a lot of friends. Uh, if you want those friends to be that your mastermind group who challenge you and make sure you grow and have higher yeah, expectations. Circle. Yeah. Um, and you can also in, in spread that by, you know, if you look at my library, I've got lots of books and autobiographies of, uh, of champions. champions who've done great things. I tend to like to read other people's stories and 
look, find the clues and you find that all the stories are pretty much the same. It's just a different person in a different trade. So your story is that you are the man who does what you're passionate about. You live your life to your core values mm. and you're happy every day. Absolutely.